Hey, what is up guys? My name is Bubloon, aka Pabloon, and today we are back with yet another new ship. This time we are taking a look at the British Tech Tree battle cruisers that you guys have probably already seen, and I know I'm late to the party, but I still want to put my thoughts out on the, especially this St. Vincent here, the tier 10. I've heard that you guys, well, you enjoy this, and uh, the people who were lucky enough to get these ships in the early access I, I'm pretty sure they're enjoying this. The, these ships. I've heard the Duncan is great. And I can tell you right now, the St. Vincent here is awesome. We're going to take a look at the normal camo here, which, I mean, it gives uh, secondary bus buffs, but I would honestly take the industrial camo, as it's called, because it gives shell dispersion. For the elite bonus, I went with elite gun operator, because torpedo damage reduction, uh, while it's nice, doesn't really make sense. You would always want to improve the guns, right? Now, this thing does not have a lot of HP, and uh, it, it's, it's, you know, close to cruiser, battle cruiser levels like Puerto Rico, Sevastopol, but that's because it gets the heavy repair team buff or heal that recovers 75% of your HP, but you only can equip two. It also has speed boost too, defensive fire and precise aiming, so a nice little suite here, but as you can see, it's not very well protected uh, as it is a battle cruiser. It is very fast and maneuverable though, better maneuvering than the Sevastopol that we reviewed a couple days back, and it's pretty fast too. The guns are 457mm that reload in 20 seconds and there's 9 barrels in total, so 3 guns. They have a 15km range, and it's got a 19% chance of setting fire, so it's still got that awesome British HE. And the gameplay you're going to see, we're going to be using it, so trust me. And no, not on battleships, but on some pesky DDs. You get 152mm guns as secondaries. It does have manual secondaries, which is awesome. And you can see there are four on each side. It also gets auto secondaries that are 113mm, 10 per side. That have a, you know, pretty fast 6 second, six second reload time. And can uh, shoot 420 kilometers. not bad at all. Along with that, I mean, this is crazy. This thing is loaded. It gets two torpedoes, one per side, that has have a 8.74 kilometer range. So it's only a single shot torpedo, but they can be shot out of the front. And I have yet to find them on the bow of this ship. I, I, If you guys can see where they are, please tell me because I cannot see them. Maybe they're in the hull. But this thing is a pushing ship. It is all about you know, barreling down your enemies and being fast and sneaky. It also gets decent AA, but it is, you know, because of the defensive fire that this AA actually works. And then we have a 9km surface detect because I'm running this build. I run dispersion, acceleration, and detection. And my commander here is just a normal commander. I mean, you could put BD on this, but I think a normal commander will suit you just fine. We have torpedo alert, artillery maintenance, air defense expert, survivalist, and I did not take an extra precise aim because I don't need it. Uh, I feel like the, these guns are precise enough as they are. Adrenaline rush, engine overload, honor seeker, and of course we take APCS. These guns are AP guns, if you ask me, and citadel strike. Somebody would probably say take giant hunter, but you only have one torpedo and yeah, makes no sense. The citadels you get on this thing are sufficient, trust me. So. Let's equip this camo and hop in a game for you guys. So here we are, we're playing Hourglass and I mean, I just want to say something. So they removed Fault Line and Atlantic, but it seems like they didn't change the algorithm of the maps, which was the whole problem. You know, we only got the two maps that we, it was, well, yeah, Fault Line and Atlantic. We only got those maps. Well, now we only get Hourglass and Encounter, so. I mean, you've fixed one problem and created another one. So Wargaming, I think it's back to the drawing board with this one. But anyways, I don't have anything against Hourglass. It's just some more variety would be nice. Uh, I, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've played Loop or Okinawa in the past couple days. And I don't think I'm the only one. But anyways, as you can see here, we're moving on down in the map. And we can use, you know, we can go pretty fast. 33 knots and we do have four speed boosts with this thing. The maneuverability of these British battle cruisers, is le at least the tier 10 here, St. Vincent, is really good, and um, or at least for battleship standards. Now these are battle cruisers, but they are in the battleship slot, so 
they uh, they do move very well. Um, we start out by shooting this Sejong here, and you can see this is with precise aiming. These guns are pretty good and accurate, and we here we have a Duncan who... I mean, I don't know what's wrong with people. They, they, they don't even look where they're going. I didn't too, but he's not even trying. Here we go. We, we finally separate from each other. That does happen, though. Luckily, there's no ramming damage in this game. But we see a full broadside Yamato, and uh, we're, of course, going to take a shot at him. Just look how much damage we can chunk this guy with. with. Remember, these are Vermont caliber guns. And they reload in 20 seconds. That's very fast. This is this is three fourths of a Vermont salvo shooting every twenty seconds. We don't have that ten second extra reload, so thirty in total. I would I would say I don't know. I haven't played it a lot, but I feel like this is a very very powerful ship, and maybe the reload is a little bit too fast. Um, I will not go out and say these are unbalanced at all because at the same time they're not very. They're very squishy, and people can easily punish them, but to me these guns seem very good. But it's just, it's it's enjoyable to play, I can tell you that right now. We get another Citadel on this Yamato Stern, which, I mean, it, the Yamato Stern is, is easily punishable. But uh, yeah, the guns are great. So, my team is pretty much already dead. We, we've lost three teammates already, and these DDs are, you know, they're starting to push in. So here you saw this, this single fire torpedo that we can shoot out of the front of our ship. So this is definitely not a kiting ship and ideally you don't want to be kiting. And what I'm doing right now showing full broadside is not the smartest thing either. But I kind of have to turn around to defend my base. And I really want to take out this Yamato. So we're about half HP now and we're going to see the heal in action. This heals you for, well it pretty much prints a new ship which... Is really nice, but I have to admit I find it a little bit difficult to use these heals. Same with the Sevastopol. I I don't know this uh, idea that you really have to conserve your heals and you only have two of them is is probably just because it's a new thing and I haven't really played with it a lot. But I do find it a little bit difficult to use. But you can see there we we pump out heals and I can imagine if you use uh, I think it's Horatio Nelson who has the improved heals. I mean, you're going to be... No, it's Jellico. Yeah, it's Jellico. You're going to be pumping out so much HP from that one heal. But currently, like I said, it's just a normal commander on this build. So we're retreating here because the enemy DDs are just pushing into our base. And we... we yeah, this is a lost game, as you can see. We're not going to win. But I wanted to include this because we have some... These guns firing with the armor piercing and absolutely devastating BBs. And we're going to be using the HE here. We just loaded HE and yeah, these DDs are going to be in for a treat because every time I've played this ship, the St. Vincent, I have been in a DD knife fight where, you know, there's multiple of them and we have to take them out. But luckily the H HE on this thing is not bad at all. And like I said, it has a 19% fire chance. And against the destroyer who has no fi uh, fire resistance, it's pretty easy to set them on fire. And this Kitakaze here is... Showing way too much broadside for, you know, him to survive. So we're going to take our pot shot at him. And uh, he does turn, so he, he, he did survive that. But trust me, we're going to get we're gonna get him, guys. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Meanwhile, we have a gearing spamming us. And now we're pretty much the only guy left. Because my DD out there is, well, doing Shimakaze things on the wide flank. Absolutely helping nobody. So we are left to our own devices here. And there we go. Show too much broadside versus a 20 second reload 457mm, you're gonna get devastated. Now we have this gearing in a smoke and, well, he shot torpedoes and there's nothing I can do really except just try to outrun them, which we won't. But we can also shoot at him with our guns and look at the auto secondaries go off, along with our normal secondaries. Yeah, it's it's a good ship. I really do enjoy this. It's, it's fast paced, it is fun, there's a lot of different armaments you can use. And I would say I highly recommend this ship. It's it's a very unusual battleship, but it's also I think it takes some skill to, to play because you can easily get punished like we just did there. If the enemy team decides to focus you, which goes for every ship in the game of course, but these are just not very tanky. They do not like getting focused. That's why I run detection also. But yeah, here we go. Full full health Shimakaze with 
the intentions of capping our base. Uh, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. So we just exit the game because, yeah, we, we did what we could. But I think this is a pretty fun tier 10. I have not tried the others. I will do that probably on stream. But I think these are going to be fun ships and also ships that more experienced and high skilled players will excel at. I don't think this is going to be a easy line for newer players to get into, but I think it's a line that once you master this, it's going to be very, very rewarding. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name has been Bubloon and as always, I am signing out.